All right, guys, Dayman Max 6, we are back in Torrance, Dave Fisher's Powerhouse, Big E. We are one of our best uh, best guys that we uh, we love back on the show. I know. I am so happy that I got <laughs> we got George on the show. I tell him all the time how much we miss <laughs> seeing him and hearing him at Gold. He's got one of the most incredible voices. <laughs> you always notice when he's in the gym. You, always, you could be like just walking in. If you, George is talking, oh, George is here. He's loud. He's loud, but he's got That's that not it. You're just very distinctive. Voice. Yeah, very distinctive. And uh, yeah, so I'm so happy to betray him today. I know he just competed last weekend, so he's was up for it doing it today. So. Um, always great to be with George, always. Georgie, good to have you back, man. You look great still. Thank you, guys. And uh, you just competed a week ago. We're going to go over that a little bit later. But uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to train Georgie today? Well, you said arms, it's right? Arms okay. for Saturday. For okay, cool. So what I thought we'd do instead of picking, we'll just do all of arms. Yeah. But I think we'll do it in superset style this way. We don't awesome. take two hours doing it. And we'll throw in some interesting techniques and like and that. And sometimes people are like pressed on time, so it's nice to have a little workout you can do quick. You know, yeah, in we'll and do. Out. We'll do what I'm planning on today is doing um, like by tri supersets. Yeah. And uh, just with some interesting movements and some of my techniques and stuff. So I think awesome. we'll just have fun and get them a good pump and and then uh, you know hopefully. George you ready, Georgie? <laughs> the last time I did arms with him, I was sore. <laughs> and George's a trainer, so that says a lot. And that says a lot because he's been training for like 100 years. I know, I know. So I'm going to try to do that again. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm ready. Awesome. All right. I ate some extra rice cakes this morning. <laughs> Let's get in there. Very good to have right. you, man. Let's do it. Here comes Big Georgie. Okay, so we're supersetting arms today, and for the first superset, we're starting off with low cable curls uh, using an incline bench, creating a bit of a backward angle. Um, this is great for hitting the biceps from a you know a different angle than you normally hit them. And the technique that we're using here for the superset is we're focusing on the eccentric or the negative contraction. So you can see George is curling the weight to the top. He's holding for a brief second, getting a squeeze and then he's taking four full seconds to lower the weight all the way back to the bottom till his arms are back out straight. And this is great for hitting the biceps, like I said, from a different angle and using those negatives, again, a great way to spur on growth. For the second exercise, we're gonna do a free weight movement, which is just the basic line barbell extension. And again, we're gonna use those four second negatives. So you can see when he starts from the top, he's lowering over four full seconds down to the forehead and then he's raising to the top in an explosive manner. Great superset for the arms when you're looking to build size. Okay, so for the second superset, we're gonna emphasize the stretch position. Uh, we're doing uh, what would normally be an incline dumbbell curl, but we didn't have an incline bench, so we just have him sitting back in an incline position. He's gonna rotate his elbows or his wrists out just a little bit, and he's going to hold the bottom position and fully stretch the biceps for four full seconds. What you want to try to do here is by rotating the elbows out or the wrists out a little bit, you get a better stretch on the biceps. You also want to raise up the rib cage at the bottom, which will help to really, really give you a complete stretch. Then, of course, you're curling the weight to the top under control, getting a squeeze, lowering down under control until you get to that fully stretched position, holding for four full seconds, killer for the biceps. So we're still working the stretch position in the triceps movement. We're doing an overhead dumbbell extension, basic, basic movement for the triceps. What we're going to do is go back into the stretch position under control and hold that for four full seconds and then explode to the top, keeping the elbows in. Another great superset for the arms. Okay, for the next superset, we're gonna focus on the contracted position of the movement using a very unique movement for the biceps. Uh, we're doing a low cable curl. We're using an incline bench. We're leading the body forward onto the bench. So it's sort of like doing a preacher curl. Uh, in a very, very unique angle, and we're using the tension of the cable to get a really, really good contraction. So you can see when he comes to the top, he's holding that squeeze really as hard as he possibly can, hyper-contracting, flexing the muscle for four full seconds before returning all the way to a straight arm position in the beginning. This is a real, real killer for the biceps, especially for the lower portion of the biceps. you really feel that movement. And then we're going to switch over to what I call a tricep push-out which is again on the incline bench. It's sort of like a hybrid between a push down and an extension. So we're back on it, laying back on an incline bench. And again, his elbows are gonna be held by his side and he's gonna push the weight down and forward to the full contracted position for four seconds. Another killer for the bison tries. Okay, for the final superset, we're going to look to maximize the pump. So we're not gonna hold any position of the rep. We're just gonna use them just like piston-like reps. 
to force as much blood as possible. You can see as he's doing standing barbell curls, basic movement. He's using strict form. He's moving the weight up and down, not stopping anywhere in the rep. He's looking to just get as much blood and pump as possible into the biceps. And then he's going to switch to the next movement, which is going to be the tricep push down. As you can see, we're going to use a rope. Again, he's just using solid form, but he's moving the weight up and down in a piston-like fashion again. And again, the goal, we just want to get a complete pump, as much blood as possible into the muscle. And we just want to give those tissues um, a lot of oxygen and nutrients so that they can recover from what we did right before in the workout. Again, great way to finish the workout with maximum pump. All right, Georgie, how are you feeling, man? Good, that kicked my butt. The arms are pumped. <laughs> I know. Sorry about the bad tan, it's still, still stuck on my skin, but I feel really good. You're in good shape, man. That's awesome. I'm glad you brought a tank top today. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks some, to these guys. Thanks to Gasp. I know. So you got you to hook up with that. What's going on with Gasp? Tell me. Um, Real quick. Coach hooked me up with Gasp. I got a little gift voucher. I went online, bought some stuff, some wraps, a belt, a shirt, some shorts. <laughs> Just opened the box up tomorrow, this morning. Nice. nice. It's a really nice belt, actually. It's soft. You don't have to break it in. Best one, you, it. best one you've had, you said. I had the cheap one from Big Five for years. <laughs> <laughs> Upgraded. You're a pro now. You need to uh, treat yourself a little bit. Yeah. Are you writing an article uh, about uh, yes. Georgie? Okay. So what I what I do for Gasp is I do um, I sort of like I'm in charge of the West Coast, so I'm doing like the West Coast California muscle scene. Okay. So I get you know either top amateurs or pros and just you know do an interview with them, talk about what they're doing, their career, how they got started. So I've you know I've done like Silvio, I did uh, Mo. Uh, Mo Burgess, um, I've done Toto, his old training partner. Yeah. So I've done a lot of guys, and uh, I said, hey, I reached out to George and said, George, you know, you just did, you just did a show. You look great. Let's go down to, you know, Dave Vicious. Let's do a workout. Let's get you the gas stuff. So I just did an interview with him, and hopefully that'll come out uh, maybe in another week or so, a week to ten. So minutes. around the same time as this video, hopefully. Probably around yeah. the same time as the video. Yeah, that'd be great. Where so can we'll, you see the uh, the interview that you did? So the him? interview will be. It's always on the gas site. Okay. Um, and then there's a like a drop down box. Um, called like community. Okay. And then it'll see you'll see that it'll say something like West Coast West Coast um, with Eric Broser and something like that. Okay. But I'll put it out on all my social media. Okay. So you'll see. And if you if you out. have it before this comes out, we'll put it in the description also. So yeah. look in there. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be out soon. Cool. So great. All right. So Georgie, you just you just competed at the Chicago Pro, which was held in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> all those shows are from you know New York Pro in Florida. It's all it's all messed up. <laughs> 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 but uh, tell me a little bit about it. How was it? It was a great experience. The uh, the Wings of Strength puts on a great show. Yeah, Jake Wood, yeah. The, the the venue was great. Right in the hotel, you walk to the convention center. Uh, I didn't do as well as I wanted to, but it was a last minute thing. Um, I think I got like 16th place, but after that, they just placed everybody the same. But, okay. you know, I'm competing against guys half my age. You did open. I did open. Yeah, there you go. Wow. And I just wanted to go compete, go travel, compete, you know, diet a little bit. So, and I did it. I'm going to really focus on next year. Do a couple more pro shows and then just coach and train and call it a day. Hang out with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know I love to be able to see him again after goals because it's a, one of the things that we miss the most is all our friends we used to see at the same time. So you, Toto, uh, you know, <laughs> Dexter, Sean, all these guys. It's, uh, it's a, so I'm glad that you're here. Now we get to see you when we come. Um, he talked to me about uh, about training uh, George today. Well, you know, I've trained George before. Usually in tandem, always with Toto when those guys are training together. Yeah. Um, so this is the first time I had George by by himself. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I love about George is George has been doing this for as long as not even longer than me. You know, and he's a coach himself, and he's and he's been a bodybuilder for all these years, and now he's a pro. Um, but he's never like, oh, I know where everything. You can't teach me anything. He's like, no, like I like this stuff. This is new. I'm going to try this. Like you just said before, I'm going to yeah. use this in my workout. So he's got that open mind, and he knows. You know, when you stop learning, then there's something wrong. You do it's when you think learn. you know everything. You, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's great because, and, and then he embraces the techniques. And then he, working with him, first of all, he's a beast in the gym. You know, he, he goes all out until, you know, I push him really, really far and he's willing to do it, even when it's painful as can be. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is he, he, he gets the concepts down. He makes adjustments during, you know, during the movement to make sure his body's in the right position, that he's getting the right stretch. And if I throw a tip at him, he listens. He stops, he listens. So training him is like, it's awesome. It's just like coaching a great student. Uh, but I think, you know, coaching another coach can be great because that coach understands what they want yeah, from a student. Yeah, yeah. So they give you that as a student. So it was a great experience. And I think that we hit a really good arm workout today, which I think is be beneficial for everybody out there to see. Georgie, what did you take out of the workout today that maybe you didn't get before? What, uh, what's, uh, how did you take out of? What did you take out of it? He always adds these little squeezes in and these negative reps. 
and you can feel the muscles tearing apart on there. I will be sore tomorrow. Yeah. And normally my biceps, they don't get sore, but I, I'm, I mean, they're still, you know how your pump goes away right away? Yeah. They're still pumped. Yeah. And I think it was the volume finish that really added to the, you know, shoved a lot of blood in there. Well, yeah, that's what I said. I, you know, we did, we did a program that I call ESPX2, which we've had on the show before. Um, and basically it's, it's one of the exercises and we did them in supersets today to, to move it along a little bit to make it even more intense. So one exercise we focus on the eccentric or the negative, one exercise we focus on the stretch position, and then one, ex one exercise we focus on the contracted position, and then we finish off with high volumes, many reps as you can get. Um, and that's basically because when, when you do a workout like this, you, like you said, you're tearing apart the muscle fibers, you're causing trauma to the fibers with those techniques. So then I like to finish with high rep volume blood training so that you can get a lot of blood, oxygen, nutrients into the muscle to help it begin the repair process after tearing it down. So those things work well together for you know a full you know hypertrophy effect. Yeah, it's a lot of variation. I, I use the stretch as well when I train, but I just don't hold it as long as you. But I've trained with Flex really before, up in uh, wait, where did he go? Right below San Jose, He's from Morgan Fresno. Hill. Yeah, okay. And he doesn't stretch on the rep; he stretches in between sets. Oh, okay. And that's a very old school way of doing things. Yeah. Is it Rick Valentine or Valentino? Valentine? Rick Valentino. Rick yeah. Valentino always tells me in total to stretch in between sets. So, and it works. It works. So now we're stretching with the weight on our hand. Yeah. So it's even of a greater it's stretch. stretch under tension yeah. is a very, very strong uh, anabolic signal for the muscle. It's actually been shown not just in the gym, but in actual studies where they show that when a muscle is just stretched, even with no eccentric, concentric, not even a contraction portion, just the stretch. When you hold the stretch for a very long time under tension, it actually causes hypertrophy. Uh, it may even cause hyperplasia, which is basically, which means the muscle cells are splitting. So you're getting more, you're not only making the muscles bigger, but if you're splitting them, that means you have potential for more growth because now you have more cells. Mm. And hyperplasia has been shown in st some studies. So it's definitely a technique that I use a lot. And I think that it definitely brings about a lot of soreness, which people like as well. Yeah. And, and, and as long as you don't mind using a little bit less weight sometimes, and like George was telling me we're doing, he was doing overhead extensions, he could do them with a 110 pound dumbbell, but today we're using what, like 60? 60. Like 60, and it was killing him. So definitely don't try to go as heavy as you no. do, yeah. uh, you know, when you use a technique like that. But Because yeah. you're starting from a rock bottom position. There's no momentum at the bottom, there's no bounce. Uh, full range so of motion. The mu yeah. It's full muscle, and, and just holding that contraction itself is so, is so hard. You're increasing the time or tension for the set, so a set could take a minute long. When most sets, for some people take 20 seconds. So yeah. yeah. Very difficult technique, and that's why I brought to George. He's an experienced trainer, so I got to hit him with something that he hasn't Yeah, done. we love to have him, uh, George. <laughs> you look great, man. Thank you're you. uh, you're an inspiration for people uh, uh, in in their 50s. I'm, I'm almost there, so I, there's hope for me. Yeah. Yes, there's <laughs> I'm not definitely hope. There's still hope for me, too. I'm a few years behind him. And, uh, now that, when awesome. he got his pro card, I go, oh, God, now I got to get my pro card. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> I gotta go, now I got to go to Team U. I got to get my pro card. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, good to have you guys. Big E, thanks so much for the workout today. Always. Yeah. George, you look great, man. Thanks, Best guys. of luck. All right, Merlin, you have any good uh, question this week? Yeah, we were looking at the questions, and um, I came across one that um, you mentioned you didn't think that we spoke about before, and I think you're right, so I think this is a good one to answer. Um, I was asked, um, how important is the sequence or the order of exercises when training legs? Um, and I really think to answer this question, it really is not just specifically towards legs. I'm going to answer this, you know, for basically any body part about sequence. So um, how important is it? It's, it's hard for me to say it, there is importance of it if you have a specific plan for that day. There's reasons why you might want to use a specific order um, depending on what type of effect you're trying to get on the muscle. Um, but it's not like if you, from a general point of view, like there's some sort of magical, you know, like sequence, like you have to do this before this for to grow. That doesn't exist. But when you're doing certain things, now let's just say you're using um, one of my training programs like ESPX2, for instance, where we want to emphasize the eccentric movement for the first exercise, the stretch movement for the second exercise, the contracted movement for the third exercise. Like um, in this video. Like we did in the video. Yeah. So, you know, when you're using um, the eccentric, I usually like to use um, a movement that is a little bit more basic. Um, 
for an eccentric movement. In the video, we did a cable movement, but it, but I'm, I'm trying to show some stuff outside the box. But a, a lot of times when I'm doing eccentric emphasis, since we want to use kind of heavy weights and do the slow negatives, I might use things like, for the legs, like a leg press or a hack squat um, or for the chest, you know, a bench press, an incline press, uh, you know, ver or, or for the shoulder, like a shoulder press, as opposed to like an isolation movement, like a side lateral. So in that respect, then when you have a stretch movement, you need to, you know, pick out a movement that works well with a stretch. Um, so you would want to do, you know, a dumbbell fly for chest um, or a stiff legged deadlift for hamstrings. Um, and again, this is because I'm using a specific order. I want to go eccentric stretch and then the contracted movement third. Obviously, you have to use something like leg extensions for a contracted movement or leg curls, you know, versus like a squatting movement where there's really not that contracted position. Yeah, yeah. So when you have a purpose, then you have to pick a specific movement and you want to stay in that, you know, in that sequence. Now, if for some reason, you know, I want to change the sequence and I want to use stretch movement first or eccentric second, yeah, you can change yeah, yeah. that, then again. Another example would be um, if you are trying to build strength in a certain movement for like so if you are let's just say you really want to work on building more mass in your chest and you know that you need to get a stronger bench press or dumbbell press and a stronger incline press you would want to work those movements first in the routine rather than later on by pre-exhausting with cable crossovers or flies because then you're going to lose strength so you also have to think am i specializing mm. on these movements so then i would want to use these movements earlier in the routine uh, another instance would be, and I just mentioned the word pre-exhaust. Now, if you're doing what they call pre-exhaust supersets, for instance, or if you're looking to pre-exhaust a muscle, generally what that means is you're going to use more of an isolated movement in the beginning, something where it's not so multi-joint. So again, using chest again as an example, you might want to pre-exhaust a muscle um, by doing cable crossovers and flies uh, and then finishing off with the compound movements if pre-exhaust is the thing you're doing that day. Now that does have some benefit. Sometimes um, you want to start out with an isolation movement where you can really feel just that muscle. And then when you go to the more basic movements, which like a bench press involves the shoulders and the chest and the triceps, you'll actually feel since the chest is pre-exhausted, um, you'll feel the bench press more uh, working the chest. Um, and same thing with a pre-exhaust superset, like you would want to do like a fly into a bench press or a cable crossover into an incline press if you're using pre-exhaustion. So that's another instance where obviously sequence makes a difference. On the opposite end, there's also something called post-activation -act supersets, which is the actually the opposite, where you want to actually do the compound movement first, followed by the isolation movement. Uh, this has a completely different effect on the muscle. Um, so again, Compound movement first, bench press, squat comes before a leg extension, you know, or a fly. So that's another instance where where it's, you know, you want to go with the sequence. But those are specific instances. So if you have a goal that day, if you're using a specific program or using a specific training technique or protocol, obviously it makes a difference. I think in a more general view, um, I think that it's usually best, especially for more beginner intermediate people, to worry about the compound complex movements do those first when you have more you know you have more strength you have more focus and concentration you have more overall energy because those movements will involve balance coordination um, you know use of stabilizer muscles so I think for those people you want to stick to that as you get you know you've been training for longer then you want to think more outside the box and you want to start moving things around so I don't think that it's as important in the sense that you have a specific order you have to stick to, you can be a little bit more outside the box, you can be a little bit more freestyle and say, you know, I'm gonna do some flies, then I'm gonna do an incline press, then I'm gonna to go to a cable crossover, then I'm gonna to go to a dip, just to give you something that your body's not used to. So basically the answer to my question is it depends on your level, depends on what type of program you're using that day, um, and it depends on, you know, it could even depend on, listen, if you're in the gym and it's a crowded gym, don't yeah. sit there and wait and rest just to get your machine if you have to wait eight minutes and lose your pump just go and move on to something else and, and you know so don't be so stuck so it just depends on the occasion uh, sometimes it, you know you need to stick to a certain sequence and sometimes you don't well, good question yeah thanks Biggie.